Hey everyone. Recently took uh, Natasha here to the dyno. Came back with some souvenirs and I wanted to share it with you guys, so check it out. <laughs> yep, that's a, that's a piece of connecting rod. It's another piece of connecting rod from obviously a different one since it's the same piece here. But the most concerning parts are right here. Here, eh, it's gonna be hard to tell, but this is a lash cap. So something happened in the valve train and this is part of a valve guide. So, um, <laughs> yeah, as I said in the previous video, this, this is the same car from that. Um, when I was building this thing, I accidentally did a really stupid mistake and I started it without putting oil in it. There's reasons and distractions and whatnot, but it doesn't matter. I started it without oil. And you can see here a couple pictures, right? It's, it wasn't that bad. It was the, uh, the number four main that was mostly the damage. And then the uh, number six connecting rod, I figured some of the debris from there probably made it into there. So I, I took those off, I cleaned everything up. Um, I polished the crank in place, uh, that took forever, but I was able to do it and put oil in it, started fine, everything was running great. Uh, took it for a few miles down the road, everything was fine. Took it to the dyno and 29 pulls later, I got some souvenirs. <laughs> uh, so today, <clears throat> let's see if I can uh, learn from my mistakes because I put this motor together, I tuned it, it really can't be anybody else's fault but me. So let's find out what I screwed up in there. Natasha here is a uh, 1994 Turbo and it's actually the car that started all of this. Um, a, a failure on my 3S GTE build back in the day made me realize that uh, I was not a fan of 3S GTEs and uh, decided to put a V6 in it and <laughs> the rest is kind of history from there. But uh, I don't know how many times motor's been in and out of this thing. It's It's got to be a lot. But um, other than this engine build, it's probably been about 25,000 miles or so since the last time I did it. And I've removed the accessories that are going to get in our way. The motor's now out on the stand. So <laughs> step one, actually, uh, let's flip this thing over. Oh yeah, that sounds great. So, <laughs> just for the fun of it, you know, there's a couple inspection ports. In fact, let me, let me show you. So we've got a couple inspection. Okay, you know what? This is the first time I flipped it. So <laughs> you can see there's all kinds of debris in there and there it's leaking. We can see, so we can see definitely that's number six connecting rod there. Number five is definitely not attached to anything. And we've got some inspection ports on this side. So you can kind of see what we're looking at. Um, since we've got it flipped, we might as well start with the oil pan. Yes, I realize I'm taking this stuff apart entirely the wrong way, but keep in mind this motor is ruined. And if you're looking for a reason to get offended, just wait till you see how I take the rear main off. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right, well, <clears throat> this ain't bad. But let me show you this. All right, let's see. The pickup is full. Oh, hey, an identifiable piece. <laughs> we got a um, wrist pin retainer. We got some piston rings. Uh, let's see, is there more stuff we can add? What the hell is this? It's round. I don't know. More piston parts. Anything else? This one says Toyota on it. Um, all right, let's keep going. So the oil filter should give us our first clue. If this thing was catastrophic, the oil filter will not contain much debris. <laughs> if it worked its way to failure, well, if it worked its way to failure, this is what you'll see. So this is kind of our first sign here 
to tell us what's going on. These things are absolutely chock full of bearing material. Um, that's really kind of telling us, letting us know that there was bearing material failure before the ultimate failure, right? Because it had to be able to get pumped through the engine. So that does support that there was probably a spun bearing, but there'll be more evidence if we get there. There should be some, some wear marks and yeah. either way, let's keep going. Oh, right, it's a 2AR that has one in there. All right, even this part's not usable. We've got a hole right there. So it looks like we're down half the pistons. We got the number four is dust. We still have the wrist pin down there. Number five is still mostly located there. In fact, there might be some interesting data on the top of that piston if there was massive detonation or something. Uh, and number six, well, number six is just dust. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this guy's here is free spinning. That one's completely missing. So, uh, though the fact that it's completely missing might also be a sign um, that we won't be able to check, but if that didn't get assembled properly and it was worked its way loose or something, could be a problem. And because of the way the 2GR comes apart, now we need to flip it. There's a yard sale down there. All right, let's see if we dropped a valve. All right, looks like we did not drop a valve. That's a really good thing. Looks like on the number four cylinder here, as you can see, um, the rockers have moved out of place. Um, otherwise, all the rockers look in place. And we're looking pretty good on the rockers. So, so that means the uh, cams might actually be reusable. I'll have to check, see if they're still straight, but that's nice. All right, timing cover. Nothing bad here, but we did see in the oil pump, uh, in the oil filter, it was pumping debris. So obviously we can't reuse the oil pump. Honestly, there's really nothing here of concern. Everything looks fine. Um, on this side, we do have the two rockers at left, but uh, as you can see, all the valves are in place. So we're doing, we're doing all right so far. Let's keep going. All right, let's get these heads off. Let's bring you guys closer. All right, let's see what you got. Uh, all right. All right, not bad. Oh, and the other side. You know, there's the tiniest bit of evidence there, but overall, this head's actually in good shape. I don't know, I'll put some thought on it if I want to reuse it or not. This piston on the other hand. But you know what? 
You know what though? I'm not seeing signs of detonation. Like this is all a nice color. There's no, there's no yeah, no, I think this was, I don't think it was the tune. At least the tune wasn't that far off. And you can see these other pistons, they, they don't look like they've got any signs of detonation either. All right, let's take the other one off. And behind bank number two. <laughs> That's the fun one. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think that used to be a spark plug. There's a piece of ring just embedded right in the head. All right, this, yeah, this head is obviously toast. There's enough left of this to know it's a piston. <laughs> Oh, hey. Well, one of our connecting rod bolts that is missing is snapped off. So now if the other one is completely missing, then we still don't know, maybe that was loose, but this leads credence to the fact that it was probably actually tightened properly. And again, um, I mean, other than debris that actually made it into here, that's an oil control ring, um, there's no signs of detonation on that piston, so I think that was doing fine. All right, well, let's get the crank out. All right, these uh, rod bearings are perfect. There's nothing wrong with them. Here, let me uh, let me show you. This is in number five. <laughs> this is number five. It got abused. The worst that's still there, and uh, you can see it's you no. Know, there's not a single scratch on there. All right, we might be able to pull the crank out yet. All right, well, we just gotta get the caps out and we can get the crank out. Oh, wow. Uh, um, well, that wasn't expected. Let me, uh... Yeah. So this bearing had damage. The other three are perfect, but this bearing had damage. And that's probably what we saw in the oil filter, but that isn't necessarily the reason it failed. Interesting. Yeah, rear main seals off. All right. Let 
Let me bring you guys in closer. All right, so I'm glad I opened this up. Um, as you can see, there's some damage here. Um, I was able to, well, apparently not, but I thought I was able to completely clean this uh, after the no oil start, but apparently I missed some of this. But I did find this in the debris. This right here, that's our number six rod bearing. And if you look at it, this didn't just get damaged from just an impact. This got really freaking hot. Um, you can see, you know, this is the color that they are otherwise. Um, this didn't just get hot. This didn't just get damaged. This got really, really hot. It's also thin. And I think that's either there must have been some debris in this passage from the no oil start because that connects right to this bearing and the oil pushes from here into here. So this would make sense that it's the only rod bearing that sees it, right? Because this one here is oiled from the, um, the number three journal. So nothing from here would contaminate this and that's what we're seeing. Um, whether it's not enough cleaning in here or it's this new debris here, uh, and that's definitely a thing that made it into here and then caused this to overheat. I really do think that's, that's what it was. I just didn't clean it up well enough. Um, you know, realistically, should I have done a full disassembly? I, I should have. The reason I didn't is, is right here, actually. So you could see when I started without oil, you see this groove right here? This was caused by that bearing spinning. And I figured the block was wasted at that point. So what the hell was the point of taking it apart and fixing it? Now, that could have saved heads. That could have, you know, yeah. Perhaps it still would have been a good idea. But I didn't. And uh, in the end, I mean, this thing still served me for long enough to get those test results. Um, we were able to test the intake, able to put that on the market. Um, I just need to do, well, I need to test those cams, make sure they're still perfectly straight. If they're not perfectly straight, uh, then they will get chucked. But as far as I can tell here, they definitely don't have any scratches and they do look straight. So they'll probably get thrown into another motor. I might save that head right there. Um, everything else is complete trash here. Uh, it's just, there's nothing really worth saving. So... All right. Um, yeah, that's all I got, man.